In this video, I'll walk you through the first mind map in this booklet. It is called the must know IT terms. And it is called the must know IT terms for a reason, because I believe that everyone in tech recruitment should uh, be aware of these uh, keywords. So we are talking about keywords uh, such as uh, DevOps or QA or Design Sprint, Git, SVN, GitLab, Git, uh, or Bitbucket. So these are some of the IT terms that uh, software developers or IT professionals in general use every day. And you can find these keywords uh, on job requirements or on candidates' resumes. So you should know these uh, keywords even in the middle of the night. And there is not that many of them. Okay, so uh, I'll walk you through them one by one right now. So let's dive right in. So we are looking at the uh, mind map with uh, must-know IT terms. I have uh, categorized these um, IT terms into a few groups. So um, the first one, and in no particular order, by the way. So the first one is uh, data. And it's probably because um, data is really close to my heart. I uh, used to be a data warehouse consultant for several years. So. What we, what we can see here is uh, that um, there are some databases. And remember, there is a relational and non-relational database. I'll not go too deep into describing which one is, is what, but you know, as a recruiter, you just need to know that some developers work with relational. So there are relationships between tables and some developers work with non-relational databases. And those databases are, you probably heard of MySQL, Microsoft, SQL, Postgres, SQL, Oracle. So these are the databases where there are some relationships between different tables. Like a table, for example, user and uh, address. So a relationship between users and addresses. Non-relational databases uh, are those where the data is just... Uh, stored in no particular order with no relations relations uh, between those um, data items there are some more advanced databases like um, search engines for example Elasticsearch is quite uh, popular these days a lot of uh, companies use Elasticsearch to store data and then run some um, advanced uh, searches on the data stored and then some companies also um, go a little further and they store huge amounts of data and they cannot store those data on their uh, local computers by any means, not even on premises, especially these days when companies work remotely without any office, well, then they can only store data in the cloud. So this is the um, modern way to store data. And there are a few companies that provide this as a service, including Google, for example. So Google has a solution called BigQuery. Or Amazon, AWS, Amazon Web Services, has a solution called uh, Elastic Map Reduce, EMR. Or Oracle, they have uh, Big Data Cloud. So different cloud providers have these uh, big data solutions. And uh, when you are screening a candidate, just ask him or her, what kind of databases um, have they used in the past or how they have stored data, whether on premise or in the cloud, what kind of databases, relational or non-relational. If on premise, then they would probably use Hadoop or Apache Spark. So these two are solutions for big data processing. Okay, so on a really high level. And uh, if you need to go deeper, then uh, we have um, inside the Tech Recruitment Academy a dedicated module that focuses on recruiting data and BI specialists. I'll show you really quick um, if, uh, if you'd like to see uh, where to find it. So you just go to the Academy and scroll down to recruiting data and uh, BI specialists, this one. Okay, so uh, once you have a position uh, that you need to fill and it's related to uh, big data or data engineering, then you need to learn a little more about uh, these, um, uh, these technologies. So that particular module would be a, a good fit. And then also within testing, within the testing domain, you just on a high level need to be aware of uh, the two different types, automated or manual testing. 
Manual testing literally means grabbing the phone or a website, or opening a website and uh, then clicking and tapping and filling in some forms on the website. So that's manual testing. Automated testing uh, automates uh, the whole uh, hustle. So developers uh, need to write tests, they need to write code that performs those tests uh, automatically. And for that reason, they have uh, some frameworks in place. So some, uh, um, some tools, we could say, so that they don't have to always start from scratch, but they use frameworks such as uh, uh, Selenium, or there are many more. And again, if you would need to go deeper, then there is a dedicated module focused on this. So those additional frameworks are, um, for example, NUnit, XUnit. So based on the programming language uh, the development team uses, they also need to use a related so, testing framework. Quality assurance, it's, uh, it's um, you know, sometimes I feel like it's a modern way to say testing, but, you know, testing doesn't sound so appealing anymore. So, you know, quality assurance is the more fancy way to, to call ensuring quality uh, through, through testing. Also, there is a difference. I'll not go too deep into this, but uh, there is a, you know, subtle difference in how testers just test uh, the uh, code while quality assurance analysts or managers they make sure that uh, the overall software development quality increases but anyway uh, moving on there are two different types of testing so it is uh, functional or non-functional so while you are interviewing candidates you can also ask them what exactly have they been testing in their applications have they been testing um, um, just, you know, uh, regression uh, tests or have they also um, tested some security defects, potential defects? Have they also tested performance? Okay, so there is a detailed map. Uh, I'll not go too far in this uh, direction, but um, inside this booklet, there is one more mind map that only focuses on testing and we expand all these nodes further. But for now, I guess this uh, this could be, could be sufficient. Right. Uh, DevOps, very important term these days. Uh, DevOps is uh, increasingly more popular with every month, every year. DevOps is um, at the intersection of development, operations, and quality assurance. So, you know, DevOps um, has been here for quite some time. It's gaining traction for the last few years. Also, uh, more and more DevOps engineers are needed. So it's definitely good to dive deeper in this uh, area as well. Also, it's really the hardest one, probably, you know, excluding blockchain or cybersecurity, but um, it's much more complicated to, uh, at least that's what I observed while working with other recruiters. It's, it's hard to digest what DevOps actually is. So um, that's also uh, why I have created a dedicated module that focuses on DevOps and cloud engineers. So we debunk some of these um, some of these issues product prototyping um, and, uh, and it's an important term because a lot of smaller companies startups innovation companies they create prototypes at first so there are some developers and the designers who only specialize in creating these prototypes so a prototype is something that is uh, supposed to just show what would it look like some functionality and uh, the term MVP stands for minimum viable product. MVP, minimum viable product. So developers need to create some small version of the end product and they uh, just choose some very basic functionality to demonstrate what would it look like. So that's referred to as minimum viable product. Design sprint, developers organize design sprints, uh, or not even developers, but product managers, with UX designers, UI designers, they organize design sprints to build these prototypes really quick, even before the minimum viable product has been created. So a design sprint is just outlining the potential functionality in a prototype that is clickable, for example, in uh, Microsoft PowerPoint or Keynote. Software prototype, it's pretty much the minimum viable product. Okay, and I mentioned already UX design, UI design. So there are different 
types of designers. Some of them focus on creating the um, um, the the flow or designing the flow of the product of the uh, application or uh, the website. So those are the user experience designers, UX designers. While other designers focus on the interface. So what we can see as now, for example, we see a beautiful mind map, colorful with certain font sizes, some bold, some not bold, some uh, larger, some text smaller. So that's what a UI designer would do on a website. They would uh, just make sure that everything is beautiful and pixel perfect. So that's uh, that's the uh, UI design. Some uh, IT professionals uh, use content management systems to build the websites. They create websites with uh, WordPress, for example, or Drupal or Joomla, Magento. These are some of the most popular content management systems. WordPress, by the way, powers over 35% of all the websites on the internet. So that's really crazy, isn't it? A lot of websites have been built using WordPress. So there must be a lot of developers who can set these websites up, right? Software code repositories um, are frequently used, uh, especially in the cloud, to store software that developers write. We are talking about um, the, the term Git that you've probably heard of. So the Git is the technology. The older version is uh, called SVN, a subversion system, but Git is the uh, modern one. And there are also some cloud providers, some companies that um, took the technology and built some products on top of it. So as an example, GitHub or GitLab or Bitbucket. These are some of the companies that created uh, the uh, software where developers can create an account and they can start using the technology for some small fee, like nine euros or nine dollars uh, per month. And they use it as a service. <clears throat> so uh, GitHub is really popular among developers, but the others as well, but GitHub especially. And uh, it's also relevant for us recruiters. So um, you can uh, also use GitHub to find developers uh, and contact them. Okay, looking at the right hand side of this uh, mind map, you can see there is uh, a different team structure in place in different companies. For example, a metrics team structure or agile team structure, cross-functional teams. So when you talk to a hiring manager, it's good to understand what um, team structure have they uh, implemented in their teams. Uh, and then you can talk about it uh, while uh, screening candidates and uh, selling them those job opportunities. Because each of these have some pros and cons for developers. I have recorded uh, dedicated videos inside the Tech Recruitment Academy where you can learn more about these uh, advantages and disadvantages from the software developer's standpoint. Speaking of uh, software development, well, these projects in IT need to be managed somehow. So there are some roles in a team where certain individuals have this responsibility to manage projects. For example, a project manager, there are some other individuals who are supposed to analyze business requirements or some other individuals uh, who need to ensure the quality is, uh, is, uh, is uh, meeting the requirements and it's increasing you know, the quality. <clears throat> so we have a detailed uh, map on the one of the next uh, pages actually that uh, explains all these uh, IT roles and categorizes in several groups. One more technical term that I would uh, encourage you to get familiar with is technical stack. So a technical stack is a combination of different technologies that uh, developers uh, frequently use. We are talking about, for example, um, an operating system plus the application and the server. So these three together. <clears throat> uh, and one of the one of the common technical stacks is called LAMP. So it is uh, a combination of the operating system, Linux, web server, Apache, database ser server, MySQL, and the application programming language, uh, PHP. 
<clears throat> okay, so one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Same with mean, M-E-A-N. So it's the combination of technologies that include MongoDB, ExpressJS, Angular, and Node.js. We will talk about all these uh, databases and, um, and frameworks uh, in the following videos when we uh, focus on programming languages and frameworks and what can be used for what purpose. But for now, just remember these three terms, LAMP, MEAN, and MERN. So MERN is just React instead of Angular. These are the four, four um, tools or four technologies that developers frequently use together. When they use Mongo, they use it with Express, Angular, and Node.js. Okay, so um, this is, uh, this is clear. Now, software development, uh, there are some uh, some process uh, like methodologies, some methodologies that um, um, enable developers to complete those projects on time and uh, uh, within the budget, which is uh, Kanban or Scrum. These are the two most common software development methodologies. Uh, we will also talk uh, in some other videos about these roles, product owners, scrum master, they organize daily stand-ups and sprints. So there is a dedicated mind map on one of the following pages, which focuses on the uh, software development uh, um, lifecycle. And we will, uh, we will uh, talk about these development methodologies further. Test-driven development is uh, a methodology that a lot of uh, developers and development teams uh, follow these days. It literally means that developers start writing tests before they develop code, that fun code for functions, the, the code that they are eventually supposed to create. But first, they develop tests to, um, to make sure that they uh, test the application properly. Software development uh, uh, consists of uh, some of these key terms, like programming language. We will talk about programming languages a lot uh, in the following mind maps, <clears throat> because uh, developers use programming languages to create uh, software, right? So there are some developers who specialize in Java. Some other developers specialize in JavaScript or C-sharp, PHP. These are very different uh, programming languages. So um, usually a developer only can work with one or two languages really well. Sometimes they change their focus. So someone who has worked with, for example, PHP for five years, then transitions to JavaScript, for example, and then continues with JavaScript only. Sometimes developers work with two languages at the same time, for example, Python on the back end and JavaScript on the front end, but we will cover this later. Query language, SQL, so a structured query language, SQL, that enables developers to pull data from a database or to store data to a database. And uh, there are some procedural languages, for example, on top of SQL has been built PLSQL. So we will also uh, discuss the uh, databases and data engineering uh, on a, a separate mind map in a separate video. Um, but uh, for now, just remember that PLSQL is uh, kind of an extension on top of SQL where developers and data engineers uh, need to migrate huge amounts of data, analyze and use for reporting. Okay, so that's, uh, that's PLSQL. Uh, COBOL, Fortran, so these are some of the uh, uh, older languages uh, that are not as popular these days anymore, but still a lot of companies um, have these uh, in place just because they have some legacy, some old code that they have to maintain. They cannot replace it easily. For example, in a bank. Markup language, uh, there is a typo, I need to fix it. It should be just mark up, not marked up. Markup language. For example, HTML, pretty much everyone in web development knows HTML. It's really easy to mark up the code with, uh, or the text with some basic labels like, uh, you know, heading one or paragraph. So that's, that's the easy part. XML is a little more complex uh, and um, anyone can customize any document with XML, which is used for data exchange. HTML is for websites. 
and XML is for data exchange. For example, when one company needs to send data to another company, they mark the data with uh, this uh, uh, language. There are some frameworks based on what programming language the developer uses. There are certain, certain frameworks. So those uh, frameworks are always written in a particular language. So when the language is uh, JavaScript, then the framework would be, for example, React or Angular. Well, Angular is written in TypeScript, but just to keep it simple, TypeScript is, you know, built on top of uh, JavaScript. So um, we will we will see how does this uh, impact us in recruitment? Because when we are looking for a PHP developer, we need to focus on specific frameworks. When we are looking for a C Sharp .NET engineer we also need to look for specific frameworks. So this is what we will practice also uh, with uh, another mind maps. Software libraries are something like frameworks, but uh, less uh, restrictive. So frameworks restrict developers in how they can write the project's code, but libraries can usually be just plugged in really easily and quickly. There are three IT layers that you need to be aware of front-end, back-end, and storage. We will keep talking about this all the time. Uh, front-end, back-end, and storage is uh, the three, uh, the three, the, these are the three pillars in web development. There are some design patterns uh, that help developers to not always reinvent the wheel, but um, to, to build on top of the best practices that other uh, people have already discovered. So developers should be aware of these design patterns and should be able to use them. And that's also how you would recognize senior developers because they can use some of these design patterns effectively. Uh, there are different team roles based on what programming language do they focus on or what particular technology do they focus on. So for example, those who like to specialize in front-end websites that they are referred to as front-end developers or those who uh, specialize in the back-end development usually are referred to as back-end developers. So uh, this is something we, uh, we um, focus on quite significantly inside the uh, members area. So again, I can show you what does it look like when you just scroll down through the uh, training modules. You will see that we have dedicated modules that focus, for example, on the uh, data and BI specialists. So based on who focuses on what, we have dedicated modules that will help you to find the right people eventually, the right IT candidates. Uh, because, you know, you may get tomorrow a requirement to, uh, to look for a CTO and uh, maybe you don't know anything about the related IT terminology. So you can just open up this module and uh, learn the essential IT vocabulary from uh, that particular module. Because there is a lot of IT roles uh, within, within the whole IT world, right? So um, these are just a few, but we have a detailed mind map that I will walk you through. And there are also some uh, cloud providers uh, that I just wanted to mention. A lot of uh, development teams these days uh, um, these days use cloud, so all these cloud providers such as uh, Amazon, Google, Microsoft, IBM, they have, you know, all these companies have built their own clouds and now they offer the cloud to other companies. So any uh, in a company or an individual can just spin off a simple project on one of these, uh, on one of these uh, websites uh, or cloud solutions and uh, I get a project up and running. Cool. So uh, yeah, it seems like we covered uh, the whole mind map uh, by now. It's uh, quite an intense one, right? Uh, hopefully you are not too confused. But again, if you need to dive deeper to any of these uh, areas, I'm just looking at, for example, DevOps or, or design. Remember that we have uh, these uh, dedicated um, modules, dedicated uh, training sessions uh, inside the Tech Recruitment uh, Academy. Uh, where you can dive deeper and find interesting screening questions. You can find out a little more about uh, how to analyze related job requirements, for example, of a cloud engineer or a DevOps engineer. 
or a data um, engineer or a cloud big data engineer. So, um, you know, this is just the mind map to give you an overview of what are the must know IT terms. And you certainly need to dive deeper if you would like to recruit these uh, IT professionals with confidence. If you'd like to download this mind map, you can uh, get the whole booklet with over 40 mind maps, including this one. So the booklet uh, is called the IT Recruiter Mind Maps booklet, and you can get it on the website called itrecruitermindmaps.com. So you can get the PDF, print it out, and just keep it on your desk so that next time before you hop on a call with a hiring manager, or an IT candidate, you can just quickly look up the related terminology. And uh, just uh, when I'm looking at the table of contents, you can see how many different mind maps uh, there are, and they cover the whole IT landscape. So starting with um, a high-level overview of the IT world, and then we dive deeper to IT roles, and also software development, mobile, desktop development. And um, then we dive even deeper, so software development with JavaScript, just because there are so many uh, developers who you may need to interact with. So that's why it's easier for you, if especially if you are transitioning from non-tech recruitment to IT recruitment, it's easier if you just keep it on your desk and before a call, you just quickly look up the uh, terminology because uh, it's really overwhelming. I've been in IT for 17 years and um, I'm still confused. I still don't remember all these frameworks, tools, languages and whatnot. So it's good to just keep this on your desk and before your call with uh, a hiring manager or a candidate, just find the mind map that is of your interest, you know, the domain that you are about to screen the candidate for and then ask questions around it. So for example, when you are talking to a JavaScript developer, just open Open up the page number 16 and uh, ask questions about testing frameworks, for example, because you will see that one node that focuses on testing frameworks in JavaScript. So this is really cool and uh, it's uh, been helping hundreds and hundreds of recruiters from around the globe and I hope you will be one of them. So just go to our website itrecruitermindmaps.com and get your PDF file. You can download it, print it out and then join our members area where you can find videos explaining each of these mind maps. So you will not get lost anymore because I will interpret all of these mind maps for you, especially if you are transitioning from non-IT to IT recruitment, this will be very helpful for you. So uh, get the PDF file, join the members area and uh, get better at IT recruitment.